All right, good evening. Welcome to the Corning Museum of Glass and our amphitheater hot shop. We have a guest artist. We have Catherine Labonte. How about a big round of applause? A glass artist from Montreal. And she'll be making her famous cartoon glass sculptures, glass animals. So has anyone seen them? Uh, the animals that are out in the, the gift shop or the museum shop? Not the gift shop, the museum shop. So she'll be making these, uh, one of the penguins. So they're super cute. And you can see they're going to be very complicated. We've got a whole team of people. We have Patrick over here at the, the main bench. Um, yeah, you can give him a big round of applause. So Catherine is the, the lead, the designer and the lead gaffer, and then everyone else is assistant. So Patrick is one of the assistants, but you might also recognize Patrick from a glass blowing um, show called Blown Away. Who's seen Blown Away? And how many of you recognize Patrick? Yeah. So we're happy to have him. And they also have another assistant. We have David over here. <clears throat> He'll be assisting as well. We have, and then we have our team, our home team. Um, we have Dane Jack. He's over here in the purple. And uh, Katie Hubs. They'll be helping out as well. I am also free to help, so feel free to, to, to uh, if you need any extra help, let me know. My name is Catherine, but I'm here for you. If you have any questions, you can shout them right out. If you're at home watching, welcome. And if you have any questions at home, um, Amanda here will help us uh, answer some of those questions as well. So they started because they don't want us to be here till 10 o'clock. Catherine has made one of these penguins before and she knows that they don't take um, a short period of time. They're very complex. There's a lot of parts. We've got eyeballs. And this is um, a drawing. The drawing you see up there, that's true to scale. So that's the size we're going to be making. So it is a fairly large piece of glass. And so Catherine said she wanted to start a little earlier, so we weren't here till 10 o'clock. Some of you might appreciate that as well. I know our security will be very happy. <clears throat> um, question? Yeah. The temperature of the furnace. Who can tell me what the temperature of the furnace is? 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit. You got it. I, you were at some of our shows today, right? Yep, I recognize you. So you've taken in the information. Now, 2,100 degrees Fahrenheit, that's about the same temperature as hot Lava, yeah. So this are, these are very extreme temperatures. The glass is very hot. And when the hot is at these temperatures, when the glass is at these temperatures, the glass moves a little like honey. It's very soft. All right, so it looks like Patrick picked up a little bit of black color bar. This will be for the body of the penguin. Now they're, they're making a black and white penguin, which is very beautiful, but it can be very tricky. When we work with black and white colors, the reason it's so tricky is because black is a very soft color and white is a stiffer color. So the black absorbs more heat, making it move around a little quicker, and the white reflects the heat, making it stay colder longer. And so when you use black and white together in one piece and you blow and inflate a bubble, the black tends to get really loosey-goosey real quick and that white tends to hold back, which makes making a black and white piece very difficult. Now, we have a lot of experience here on stage and they know, they know these facts. So, what they've chosen to do is pick up a bar of black color called Duro color. The Duro color is very stiff. So although it is black, it's uh, made to be very stiff. It's meant to hold its shape and um, not get as hot as the regular soft black. And so Patrick is heating that up and that's what they'll be using. So they've taken this in cons into consideration and they know that the black is very stiff so they're choosing to use the Duro black which is a really great idea. Especially because this penguin is going to be very large and a large majority of the penguin is that black color. So 
So he's heating that up. That black color, it looks orange because it is so hot. You got it. So they're gonna melt this in, get everything running nice and hot, and then they'll start a bubble in the glass. So they're very busy over here. They ha they're making the eyes. They're making the eyes ahead of time. They, I'm pretty sure they'll probably make the feet, the beak. Oh, here, look, here we have a penguin. How cute is that? If you would like to take this penguin home, that is very possible because it's for sale, I think. Is this for sale? This is for sale. You can adopt it today. There's little ones too. And it's quite adorable. Look at it, it's so cute. How much is the penguin? Hey Megan, how much is the penguin? Well, this is the fun part. You get to pick it up and lift it and look at the bottom. 2,000. So if you really love this. Now you're going to see, this is, the, this is the thing. You walk into a gallery and you see the glass and you see the price on the glass. And you're like, why is that so expensive? What you're gonna see here, do you see how many people we have on the stage? Yeah. Do you see the furnace? It's kept on 24 hours a day. And then how much experience, Patrick, you've been blowing glass for how many years? 27 years. What about you, Catherine? 20 years. So you can see we've got a ton of experience. So you can't make this penguin on your first day of glass making, on your second day of glass making, or probably even your 10th year of glass making. Um, you have to build these skills over many years. So the, the, what we're gonna account for is the color, the teamwork, because you're gonna see a lot of teamwork and you're gonna see just how difficult this process really is and why Mr. Penguin over there costs what he does. I did hear that there is some smaller penguins. They're probably still a little pricey, but you will see with the experience, you're paying for masterpieces here. You'll see just how difficult this really is. The small ones are a bargain, we said. What, what, are, we, what are our small ones? 162, that's not bad. Yeah, nice, this size, that's a good size piece of glass, and that's a good, uh, that's a good price for a, a size of that piece for um, well-known glassmakers as well. So if you feel like you need to take one of home, one of these penguins, that is very possible today. She's got all sorts of other animals. I've seen elephants, dogs, cats, mice. They're so cute. They have these eyes that pop right out of their head. I was reading a little bit about Catherine's work and she said she was very inspired by cartoons. And so she's gonna take those cartoons and make these beautiful glass sculptures. So this is the eyeball. You can see the scale here. The eyeball is a very large eyeball. She made the first one, then she measured it so she could match the second eyeball. And so this will be a, um, the eyeballs will be even sized. Um, she shapes the glass right in the palm of her hand using the local newspaper. Fold it up, soaked in water, and it's one of our favorite tools because that's really the only way we can shape our glass with our hands. Now, they've got the, the black duro. Now, black duro is so stiff that they probably don't, is that why you don't want to use it for the whole piece? It's because it is so stiff that we want to add a little bit. So we're now, they're going to add a little bit of just the regular soft black over top. So the, the stiffer black underneath, or the duro, will kind of hold everything together. But then we're gonna need a little bit more black because we need it to be very dense so we don't see through the penguin. If we don't add enough color, we can see right through the penguin. And so we're gonna add some more of that, more of that softer black on top to, get, to build up the amount of color that we need. So here's the, the first eye, the second eye. They're gonna flip this around. So Catherine cools that jack line. And with a light tap, it pops right off. Feel free that anytime they break the glass and it doesn't hit the floor to give them a big round of applause. 
Because as we know, well, we know as glass makers, or if you've seen a demonstration today, you know that glass is very fragile and it will crack and break and it will go wrong at any moment. And so any time the glass is on the pipe and off the floor, we're pretty happy about it. All right, so they're gonna overlay some color over here. So Patrick's got the Duro black. Dane's gonna bring over the hot soft black and they'll let it drip right onto the bubble. And then we call this a color overlay. So they're going to push the glass all the way around the color. We're taking name suggestions. This is exciting. We're going to name the penguins tonight. So we are taking suggestions. You, earlier today, did, you were at the Bubblehead demonstration, right? So earlier today, we made a Bubblehead, which is our museum's kind of character that we make at a show at 11.30. And we made this crazy Bubblehead with four eyes and horns and one hair out of the top of its head. And it was really crazy looking. And one of our guests came up with an idea to name him or her, I forget. McFlurry de Durr. What a great name, right? So we already have someone in the crowd that's really good at naming characters. So we're going to take the, the uh, suggestions, we're going to write them up on the board, and then Catherine is going to pick the name that she likes the best. Okay? So let's start off. Did you have a suggestion for the penguins? How many penguins are we naming? One, only one, the big one. The one she's making. We're gonna name, these already have names, obviously, because they exist already. Duh. The one she's making is going to be, is going to the Chemung County SPCA. So keep that in mind. It's going to the Chemung County SPCA. We have the penguin, and as we start adding the eyes and the, the feet and, the, and it comes to life, we're gonna come up with some names. But does anyone have a name? He's, he's ready. What do we got? Chir Chili Churchill. Chili Churchill. Okay, Sir Chili Churchill. Write it, we'll write it up on the board. Okay, Amanda's got a Sharpie. She, Sharpie? No Sharpies. This is, we don't want a permanent marker. Oh, you got paper. Okay, good. Thank you. Oh, whew. We don't want permanent marker on our whiteboard. We've made that mistake many times. Okay. Ooh, we've got some orange color here. David's rolling through some orange color. Correction. Corn yellow. Correction, this is not orange, this is corn yellow. So we buy our company, or we buy our color from a, a handful of companies. Um, this particular corn yellow comes from Reichenbach in Germany. And so they've named it corn yellow. And it's a nice orange color. This might be a future occupation for you, coming up with different uh, names for colors, seeing as how you like to name. Um, Lots of different things. You come up with a lot of creative ideas. So some of the colors, I'll name off some of the colors over here. We've got corn yellow. We've got coral red, strawberry, fire red, may green, rosetta green, granny apple green. Lots of different colors. They all have different names and they all have numbers. But there's tons of colors to choose from. And so for the feet, they're using corn yellow, which looks nice and orange. Oh, here's a little guy. So cute. I love how Catherine makes these bulging cartoon eyes. It gives them so much character. All right, so they've got the black. And because, oh, look, she's gonna, Catherine's gonna squish the glass. Oop. She's got this special paddle to squeeze and press the glass. So she's making it thin for the foot. 
Glass is pretty soft when it's hot, so you can squeeze it, you can pinch it, you can pull it, twist it, blow it up. We're taking measurements. We want this penguin to have the same size feet. We don't want them to walk around with a little foot and big foot. We want them to be somewhat matching. All right, so Patrick has gathered more clear glass over top of this. It looks like it's grown in size, but that's just the magnification properties of the thick clear glass. That's what makes paperweights so special. And I looked away for just a second, but it looks like Catherine's drawing on sort of like the tendons for the toes. I don't know if they're tendons or not, but on a penguin, but it's the, the thicker part of the penguin's foot. So I think there's three on, the one, from the one I saw over there, there's three. So David brings over this fresh, hot, clear glass, and watch how they just kind of drag that on there. So soupy. And it's really easy to cut through when it's hot. Did you ever think glass would move like that? It would become soupy and sticky? Yeah. So we always think of glass as a cold, hard, sharp material. But here, it's very hot, soft, gooey, and it's even a little sticky. It still can be very sharp, even when it's hot. But it is nice and soft. But it goes from a very soft, fluid, spongy material to a material that's quite cold. And cold to us would be somewhere around 1,000 degrees. So if we ever let that glass get too cold, it would be right around 1,000 degrees. And that's when it becomes susceptible to cracking from the cold air. So look at, there we go. We got the nice little foot there. So what we're doing is we're doing all the prep work. This is going to be the body. Or maybe this might be the fins. I'm not sure. The, the, the arms. Let's see how they did this. It looks like they may have cut the bubble. Yeah, they just kind of pull it out of the bubble. So the, the, the arms or the, the wings will come out of the bubble. So they won't be separate bits. So when you make a complex sculpture like this, you have to do a lot of the work ahead of time, or you have to have a very large team so that you're um, not working all day long on one piece. Um, you can see it's going to become uh, pretty crazy once we start putting everything together. And it helps to have a big team, which I think is one of the most fun things about glass making. It's, it's not something you go off and you do alone, usually. It involves a team. And we, the team works together. And this team looks like it, it, it's going to um, work very well together because everything's happening and everything's going really smooth. All right. So Catherine's pulling out the webbed feet for the penguin with the tweezers. See, she pulls with both tweezers. It's tricky because you've got to keep the glass turning at all times or else gravity will take over and pull it towards the floor. And so we've got ways, when we're sculpting glass, you can let it fall on, off center and then fall back on center. And you can pull and stretch. We got another name? Chili Dilly from an on at home viewer has put Chili Dilly into the, uh, into the, uh, the running. All right, we've got, it looks like we've got another name. I'm gonna come out here so I can hear better. Because have you ever heard of that game called Telephone where somebody tells you something and you hear something different and then some, a different name? We don't want that to happen. What's, what, what, what do you think? What's that? <gasps> Onyx the Penguin. I love it. Nice. Yeah, high five. Oh, we got another one. Funk. With a K. Funk with a K. Schmunk. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, so it was, it's not just funk, it's funk from Shimung. <laughs> and Shimung's igloo? Shimung's igloo. That's a name. You can write that one down. Got it? Shimung's igloo. Oh, the Pitts. Are you from Pittsburgh? Awesome. We've got some, Pits from, some guests from Pittsburgh. And the Pittsburgh Penguins mascot is named Igloo. So this is Shemung the Igloo. Shemung the Igloo. We've, oh, we've get, we're getting some helpful hints as well. If we use Sharpie on the whiteboard, we can use Lysol to get it off. Thank you. That helps. Yeah, awesome. Good, okay. Do we have another, do we have a question or a name? A name. Yeah, you can round, give him a round of applause. One more name over here. Oh, someone has had too much squash this summer. We have a name, Butter Not Be Squash. <laughs> Do you have a garden at home? Is all you're eating squash? Yeah, what's your name? Flipper the Penguin. Awesome. Okay, we got another one over here. Yes? Okay. So because this penguin kind of looks like a bowling pin, we're going to try to name him Penguin. <laughs> I love it. You got that, Amanda? Penguin. Okay, I'm ready. Flippy floppy. That's fun. Flippy floppy. Because the glass is flipping and flopping, right? I love it. Okay. Yep. Irwin. Very simple. Very Shimung Valley. I love it. Irwin. Who's local? Are you guys local? No. Did you know that there's a town nearby called Irwin? Well, there you go. It's very, it's very, uh, Fitting, yeah? Tiao, Tiao Tiao. T-I-A-O, T-I-A-O. Tiao Tiao. In Mandarin? In Mandarin, Tiao Tiao means jump. Jump, 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 jump. I love it. Shei Shei. So we've had a question. So they're making all these parts. They made the eyeballs, they're making fins. And how are we going to keep these hot while we're still working on the body? So there's a little oven over there. Can you see where Katie is? And that oven is called a garage. So see how she's going in and out of the garage? She, we park it in the garage and it stays hot until we're ready to use it. And I don't know if this is why they called it a garage, but if you look at the front, there's two little openings. It kind of looks like a garage. The temperature in the garage is probably around 1,050 degrees. We can change it, but I think it's running 1,050. There's a hotter side and a colder side because there's a burner on one side. So if we want to leave something in there for a long time, we'll put it on the colder side. And then when you want to take it out, you'll come over to the hotter side because if you come out and it's too cold and you go into the 2,000 degree heat, it'll crack and explode. That's right, you're welcome, yeah. Question? There is not a camera inside the oven. Yeah, but there is a special window in the back of the oven. And that window is made of a type of glass called fused silica. So it's pure silica, there's nothing else added to it. It was developed right here in Corning, New York in the 1930s. 
And it really had no use. They were trying to develop a very, you know, a glass that was close to quartz, which would have a very high melting temperature. And it's optically clear. And it really had no use until NASA came to Corning looking for a glass to use for the space shuttle's windshield. It's currently, uh, or most recently, used in the optical fibers for fiber optics because it's optically clear. So it's this, the core of the optical fibers. Yeah, but fused silica. But yeah, there's a little window in the back of that oven. The camera sits right behind it. But it's a really unique view into the glassmaker's oven. Yeah. You have a name suggestion. Gotcha. OK. Mm hmm OK. Cat bird. OK, I love it. So because her name is Catherine, or cat, and because it's a bird, Cat bird. And because it's going to the SPCA. Awesome. Cat bird, we'll put it on the list. Who's got another name for me? Yeah. yeah. I don't trust the caliber. I don't, I don't blame you. Lily? Luli. Newly with an N. Newly the pumpkin. Oh, pumpkin, I got pumpkins on the brain. I'm ready for fall. Newly the penguin. Nice. Okay, we've got more names. Yep. What's your name? Not your name. Okay, we've got three names. Amanda, are you ready? We've got three names. Okay, she's ready. Marty Feldman. Emperor Happy Feet. And Dax. Awesome. I love them all. Man, Catherine's going to need you guys all around every time she makes an animal because you've got so many great names. Okay, we're very eager over here. Derek, love it. Yeah, he looks, well, we haven't seen him yet, but he kind of looks like a Derek. We saw his eyes. You can tell a lot by the eyes. Derek. Yes? Yep, you. Rico, the penguin from Madagascar. I love it. Rico. He does look like a Rico. All right, what did they do? I missed it. There's the other foot. Okay, we've got another name over here. What would you like this penguin's name to be? <laughs> Groot? Yep, Groot. There we go. And his sister wants? Carlo? Carlo. Ooh, Carlo, it means he's cold in Hebrew. Awesome. Yeah, I bet he is cold. Penguins are usually cold, so that's a good name. Wow, such great names. Anybody else? Don't worry, this is not the last call. Okay, what's your name? Huh? You. Not your name, sorry. I keep saying, what's your name? That's very confusing. Okay, good. That's all I wanted. Weeble wobble. I love it. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall over, right? So hopefully this penguin doesn't weeble wobble. That's the tricky part about making glass, is making it stand up. Because when you're making it, it's on the end of a pipe. And so you're turning it and turning it, and you never know if it's going to stand up until you have to stand it up, which is after you break it off the pipe, which can be pretty tricky. All right. All right. If you have any other names, let me know. I'll come around. I'm going to come back down here and see what they're doing. I see they've got another foot in the, in the making. Patrick supplied the white color for the... The belly, right? I think. Yeah? You have two. Okay. What's the second one? Aaron. And Brian. Burr, because he's so cold. Brian. And Aaron. Run? Aaron. Gotcha. Nice. Yes. 
Mr. Waddles. Yeah? Willie or Billy? Willie the penguin. Nice, awesome. Yes? Mighty penguin, because he is a mighty penguin. That's for sure. Captain? Just captain. That's okay. That's fine. I'm just, ch I'm just checking. Captain, I like it. No. Captain Chili. Good one, right? Yeah? Corning, Corning win. Like Corning Penguin. Corning win. I like it. That's unique. Very cool. Yeah. <laughs> Major what? Wiggle bottoms? Major wiggle bottoms. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. Perry. I like it. Yep. Perry's a good one. Amanda, are you writing all of this down? Yes? William the Conqueror. Nice. 2000 dollars penguin. Very straightforward. No questions. I like it. Yes. Captain Seamog. Yeah, we call our museum Seamog. C M O G. That's our actually our website too. C M O G Corning Museum of Glass. C O M C M O G dot org is our website. If you're ever curious, if you want to look something up on the yeah. Flippy floppy. I like it. Weeble wobble, flippy floppy. We've got flippy floppy too. Yes? Did you want a chance to name the penguin? You changed your mind? Yes? Icebreaker, cool. Nice. What's, ooh, that's kind of tricky because glass is really breakable and so calling them icebreakers, that's, that can be tricky. Yeah? Oh, cute, cute. He's so cute, you could call him cute, cute. Yeah? Glass breaker. No. We, see this is tricky because there's like this magical thing that happens in a hot shop. And because if you talk about something and say how beautiful it is when you're making it, this is like a superstition. So if you, have, you make this bowl and it's the most beautiful bowl we've made and you're watching it being made and you say, oh, this is so beautiful, it never makes it into the oven. It always breaks. So we always try to not talk about how beautiful. So let's see if we call this penguin glass breaker. We'll see what happens. But I have, I have, no, I have no doubt that they are not going to break, break this penguin. So hopefully the penguin is the glass breaker and not the team, right? Yeah, let's hope. Cross your fingers. Yes. The penguin king. Love it. You have a question, good. Yep. Correct. Yeah, so glass only sticks to other hot things. So you see that kind of pipe, that pipe warmer there that has all the pipes sticking out of it and it's glowing sort of a cherry red. So we, when we wanna put the pipes in there to keep them, we keep them in there and it just keeps the end nice and hot. Oh look, Patrick just kind of dug a little hole in the side there. Do you know what he's doing? Yeah, we'll get, we'll, I'll get it. Um, you know what he's doing? What? I, th I think he's going to flip the whole thing around. He's going to reverse the axis. So right now, the white is on the tip there, and they need that to be on the belly of the penguin. So they're going to change the way it's oriented by, see, uh, Dane's got a, another pipe with a collar on it. They're going to stick the collar to that, 
Here we go. Watch this. They stick it on right over the hole. He'll break it free, and now we've flipped the axis, so the white will now be on the side or the belly. Pretty cool, right? Watch this. There we go. Nice. Reversing the axis, we call it, because we're reversing the axis. You have a name? Jelly Magellan, like Magellan the Penguins. Love it. Yes? Wablo. Very simple. Tasteful. Yes? One more. Bobby. Cute. Bobby and Bobber. Oh, the little one could be Bobber. Oh, the actual name is Bopper. Cool. I like it. Bopper. But he, you accidentally said Bobby. So that's, that's totally okay, because it's kind of nerve-wracking. Yeah, Bopper. Yeah, that's a, I like that name. Cool. You don't want to tell me? I'm right here. <laughs> I sat in the crowd right behind someone who said, I don't want to say, I don't want to tell her what I mean. And I said, I'm right here. <gasps> okay, so the name Bopper becomes, means his eyes are popping out, like Popper, like eye Bopper. I know, isn't that cute? Because his eyes are like a cartoon, right? Yeah, so Catherine's inspired by all these cartoon kind of animals and so because his eyes are popping out of his head. It makes him look very silly like a cartoon. They, whoa. They're gonna, I hope they don't pop out onto the ground. But they look like they're going to, so it makes them look silly. I get it. You sure you don't want to tell me? Yeah. <laughs> well, if you change your mind, you let me know. All right, so they reversed the axis. They've made the feet. They've made the popping eyes for Bopper. Maybe, maybe his name is Bopper. We don't know yet. So it's tricky working on a blowpipe because you have to make this thing and it's kind of on the side. So by flipping the axis, the belly is now on the side and now they can stretch it out like a bowling pin they can now get it hot and stretch it out to give it that shape. You got a name? Oreo. Yep, black and white Oreo. Yep. We, yep, that works. Two gathers over this? That came from the internet? Oh. Oh, I don't know this penguin. Flubber? Flubber? This is my size. Yep. But I love making big pieces. But Way up there. Do you want to shout it out or do you want me to run up there? Okay, come up there. Okay. This is not something we want to be shouting. <laughs> All right, so now Patrick is shaping the glass in the palm of his hand and Catherine's ready to blow. Because the way we shape this penguin's body is by blowing through the end of the pipe and inflating the bubble. So this is a bubble. So she's ready to blow and inflate the bubble. Oh, cool, Opus the Penguin. Because it's kind of cartoony, and this is an old cartoon, Opus the Penguin. Nice, so that's another option. We've got options, we're not short. That's Opus, oh, he's so cute. Nice. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Tuxedo Tim. He's always ready for a fancy affair because he's always wearing his finest black and white tuxedo. Is that it? 
Is there somebody else up here? Who was it? Yeah? Penguin McPenguin. Yep. Finland. I like it. We have a glass blower who's here for the summer with us. You see. You see if you're at home watching, because I, I, I don't see you here. Yusi is from Finland, so I know which name Yusi would pick. The name Finland. Would you call him Finn for short? Because he also has Finns? Yeah, maybe. Oh, you called him Finland because of his Finns. You are not from Finland, okay? You're from New York. Whereabouts in New York? Rochester. I think I know this because we're, you were at my Don't Try This at Home show and you asked me, I went to Rochester Institute of Technology and you asked me what was my favorite thing about Rochester. I remember this. Actually, what? Yeah. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Tucks a million. Tucks a million. That's our, our next suggestion, tux a million. Catherine is gonna have a really hard time picking from these names because there's a lot. All right, what are they doing down there? They're marvering the glass. This table, this steel table is called a marver. The very first marvers were made of marble. You heading out? Thanks for coming. Yeah? You got more names? Danquin? Danquin. Yeah? Captain Cook from Popper's Penguins? Of the book, cool. Ice, king of the ice. Yes, the penguin is the king of the ice. King of the iceberg, yeah? Penny, cool. There was a penguin named Penny, right? Was that a character? It had Penny, oh no, that's another character. I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> Do you see Catherine blowing through the end of the pipe? How hard do you think Catherine has to blow to inflate the hot glass? Hard or soft? I heard some hard and some soft. Who thinks hard? You weren't at the Don't Try This at Home show, were you? Who thinks soft? Yeah, this glass is so soft that she doesn't have to blow very hard at all. She blows very soft and the glass blows up nice and easy. Now they're cooling it off. See him blowing on it with the cold, compressed air? This is enough glass to make a pretty small penguin. So I have a, I don't know for sure. David, are they going to gather over this? Dane, twice. Wow, okay, they're gonna gather over this twice. You know what that means? means get ready because this is going to get pretty heavy and pretty big. So watch this. So Dane's going to make sure they have wooden blocks big enough to shape the hot glass. I'm glad we got all that name business out of the way because this is going to get pretty exciting here and things are going to start happening pretty quick and get real serious. I mean real serious. They're going to gather twice on this. That means a lot more glass. I think this is going to be the last call. So if somebody's sitting on a name that they just have to shout out, we're gonna take three more. Okay. SPCA, Sir Penguin Cares A Lot. <gasps> I love it. I love it, yes. Kevin. Kevin. The what? From 321 Penguins. I don't know this, but. Carnelian? Carnelian. Dr. 
poutine? Like the uh, Canadian snack? All right, well, that, they're from Montreal. Do you eat poutine in Montreal? Yes, they do. So it's Dr. Poutine. Very cool. Do you like poutine? Of course. Of course. <laughs> uh, who doesn't like French fries and gravy and cheese and what else? Everything you can imagine? Put it on there, yep. Who's had poutine? Do you like it? Yes, they love it. And, okay. I think we're going to have to call it at that. We've got a long list. If we, if we add any more to the list, I think we'll be here all night. So now we're going to watch the glass blowing. And now we're all thinking about poutine and what's for dinner. Right? Yeah. Kevin? Kevin. Yep. That was the second to last Kevin. Yep. Right after, right before Dr. Poutine, there was Kevin in the running up. Are they going to blow it now? No, they're going to get more glass. Watch this. Okay, here he goes. Into the fiery furnace with the bubble. He's kind of just going to throw it in there. And then he's going to turn, turn, turn. Turn, turn, turn. And watch what he comes out with. Like what? Like the wheels on the bus, turn, turn, turn. Look at this, there we go. Now he's gonna drip it off. He drips off the hot glass. Isn't that cool? Did you ever think glass would drip like that? It's hard to imagine because they're keeping the pipes turning so evenly that um, it doesn't drip off. So that's the only reason the glass isn't dripping off now is because he's keeping the pipe turning, keeping it on center. Now he's going to shape it with a wooden scoop tool called a block. The block is soaked in water, and so the glass glides along on a thin layer of steam. Same thing with this wooden, or excuse me, this newspaper pad. He shapes the glass right in the palm of his hand. 2,000 degrees in the palm of his hand, the only thing in between, the Corning Leader, our local newspaper. It's the best newspaper in the world for shaping hot glass in Corning. Ooh, Catherine's got some cork. Paddles. These paddles are made of cork, like you would cork a bottle with, or that you would use for a cork board. Cork is really nice to shape glass because you can kind of squeeze it and you won't scratch it or, sh or uh, uh, um, distort it. You can just squeeze the glass into a sort of a lollipop shape. So this will allow them to probably contour the, the wings. So there you go, shaping the glass with the newspaper, keeping the pipe turning, and David's ready to blow. See it getting bigger? So he's blowing, and he only blows as hard as Patrick asks him to. So Patrick will say, blow hard, blow soft, He'll also say, start blowing and stop blowing. So Patrick is the person in charge, the gaffer, the person sitting at the bench. Gaffer meaning the foreman on the team or the, um, basically the, the person that's calling the shot. So in movie credits, you'll see the term gaffer and that's the person that's in charge of the lighting design. So there's no glass floor in the credits and the movie set, but there is a person in charge of the lighting design. So here, in the hot shop, it's the person in charge of the team. They make all the decisions, call all the shots. Okay, so we've got the penguin's body well underway. You notice that black color looks very red and orange. If we ever see this start to get really black looking, 
then we know that the glass is getting colder. Yep. So as he doesn't heat this, he's going to gather over this again. Can we play that furnace animation? You won't be able to see what's going on inside the furnace as he gathers, but we have a lovely animation. Can we play that now? There's our furnace. There's a big ceramic crucible that holds about 1,000 pounds of clear glass. Patrick will go in, push the bubble below the surface, and turn, 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 just like the wheels on the bus. Gather out some of more of that molten material. All right, they're getting ready. The most important thing to do is cool off the pipe. Because yes, the pipe does get hot. People ask all the time, does the pipe get hot? It most certainly does. And so David is actually over there in a trough of cold water cooling off the pipe. We call that a pipe cooler. And that allows us to get a nice wide grip on the pipe so we're not holding it like a fishing pole. It'd be really hard to hold that much glass if we held it way back in the colder area. But by cooling it off, we can get a nice um, stable grip on the pipe. Now, they're having a team powwow. This is the best time to do it because after this, after we gather the glass, it's going to be go, go, go. So they're having a little team powwow, making sure they have all the tools ready because here we go. He goes back in for the fresh gather. The fresh gather. There he goes. Pushes it in there. And he kind of turns against the wall. That allows him to gather up more glass. This is kind of like gathering honey out of the honey pot with a honey dipper. And comes out, look at it drip right off. And when he's dripped off just the amount he wants to drip off, he brings it back up level. And what do you think? What do you think about that fresh gather? That's a lot of glass, I can tell you pretty heavy. I can't tell you how heavy because I haven't touched it, but I, it looks heavy. And I know because he's holding it on the end of a pipe that it feels a lot heavier now than it will tomorrow when it's close to the body. <laughs> Gravity is also one of our favorite tools. So every now and then you kind of see him kind of dip it up like this. And the glass starts to fall off the end of the pipe. Shaping it right in the palm of his hand. All right, so they're in their reheating oven. This is also called a glory hole. But it allows us to reheat the glass after it's been removed from the furnace. Gravity, there we go, gravity, stretching it out. It takes a lot of control to do that because you saw he held it at the same angle over here and you saw all the glass drip off. So he know, has to know just how hot to get the glass to get it to drip right off. All right, so he's marveling the glass. Marvering does a couple things. It cools it off quite a bit because the, the, t the metal table is cold. So the paper will shape and cool the glass, but it won't cool it as much as the cold metal table. And so they want to cool this off because they're going to blow into it. But more importantly, the tip of that bubble, it's the first thing in the oven in the glory hole and the last thing out. So it's always the hottest part of the piece. And so if you don't cool that off and you blow, it could always become too thin there at the top. 
And so they always cool that off before they blow into it so they can keep that nice thickness at the top. Because we don't want to like blow the bubble right through the head. And then they wouldn't have a head anymore. It would be blown away, just like the show. How many of you are going to go home and watch the show Blown Away? And you can say, I saw Patrick work live at the Corning Museum of Glass. It's a fun show. They have all these challenges. So it's kind of like any competition reality show where they have, you know, um, they had about 10 glassmakers. And each episode, they got a new challenge. And so um, over here on the wall over here, we have pieces from each of the contestants. So Patrick's piece, I believe, was the, let's see, the one from the, the challenge where the guest judge was the sommelier. Yeah. Patrick, over here, it's, the, it's the, the wine glass and the decanter. So for that challenge, um, they had the guest judge, who was a sommelier, and they had to create a vessel that would hold wine. And um, so that's the piece we have from Patrick over here from the show Blown Away. And so it's a really beautiful piece, a nice wine glass and a beautiful decanter. So you can check that out as well. All right, so they'll take a set of steel tools called jacks. These are probably the glass maker's um, most important tool. It's the tool you'll see whether, where, wherever you go in the world. If you go to a glass shop, you'll see a set of these steel tools or jacks. And these jacks were used by the early Roman glass makers. They were dug out of old glass making sites in Mesopotamia. And so those tools were always the glass makers most important tool. Katie is shielding Patrick's arm. That's a lot of glass and it's throwing off a lot of heat. And so Katie was just shielding Patrick's arm. He also has a sleeve on. They have a measurement of the, the height of the penguin. All right, Dane's getting that nice and hot, using gravity again. Now you can see how this penguin gets all of its height from using heat and gravity. And that jack line is so important because that's how we're going to break the glass off of the blowpipe. Here we go again. Katie's shielding. Patrick is papering and turning. Dane is helping out on the backup turn. And David is blowing and inflating the bubble. And Catherine's here ready, ready and waiting to help them out. So this is her piece, but not all uh, glass artists are able to, you know, are able or want to lift this much material. This is really hard on the body, and so if you're not used to working large like this, it's nice to have somebody else do the heavy lifting for you. And so um, for the smaller pieces, I'm sure she's um, at the bench, but for this piece, she's kind of, kind of guiding the team along. So they've got the measurement. This is how tall they want this penguin to be. And so they've got the caliper readings. Because you can go from a drawing, but it's most important to um, it's hard to tell once you have it out in the end of the pipe. Okay. And then right back into the heat. Any questions so far? Are we doing good? Doing all right? Yeah? Yeah, so why are they not wearing any gloves? You see them wearing some sleeves on their arms but no gloves. Now, although it would be very nice to wear gloves, it would be also very difficult. So it would be like trying to type an email or play the piano or play the guitar with gloves on. It would be really difficult to turn the pipe, to use the tools. 
And so we don't really need to use to wear gloves too much. Every now and then you'll see them wearing gloves. But for the most part, we don't really need to wear gloves. And if you go anywhere around the world, you don't see glass makers wearing gloves. But it seems like the obvious, the obvious choice. Yeah, but we don't wear gloves. Yep. Question? Yeah. Okay, so two questions. With the torches, where does the gas come from? We have a gas cart, and we have propane. On the other side of that gas cart, there's a valve for propane and natural gas, and then air, oxygen, or um, we have the compressed air coming out of the cart as well. So for the big fluffy torch, yeah, so they're getting that nice and hot. And now they're gonna start to kind of give this penguin a little shape. So for our fluffy torch, which is the big one that's kind of like the weed burner, that's propane. And then for the, the torch you see them light every now and then, that's kind of the, the one that is burning blue. That one is natural gas and natural gas and oxygen. So this one's propane. And then this hot torch, which he's going to light here in a second, that is the natural gas and oxygen. So it burns at a much uh, hotter in a much hotter flame. There we go, there it is. So that torch runs around 4,000, 3,000, 4,000 degrees. And that will allow him to spot heat certain areas. So he's gonna start to heat up the areas, maybe for the, the wings. He's gonna start to heat up those lines and carve into the bubble. So they're going, now they can't keep it turning because they wanna focus on two spots. So now they're going to start to kind of do this flip back and forth, let it fall off center, let it fall on center, and work on the wings. And then the second question is, where do we get our color? So there's a couple companies that we buy from, and we buy from um, Gaffer Glass, and they make color. We buy from Hot Glass Color. Um, we buy from Olympic Color. But um, the companies are Reichenbox in Germany, and um, Gaffer Glass, they make their own color. So you can buy um, all the different colors from the different companies. And they're very good at getting the recipes down and making sure that they're compatible with all the different colors and all the different types of glass that people use. Yep. So it's like baking a cake. You might be the chef, you might be the person baking the cake, but you're probably not the person making the flour, making the sugar, you know, doing all that. So you buy the ingredients from someone else. There are glass makers that make their own color, but uh, usually we leave that to someone else because they're very good at it. Yeah? The sticks, oh, the sticks with the prongs. These are forks, and so if we were going to make like a bowl or a vase, because we couldn't carry the bowl or vase into the oven, we can catch it with the forks while it's hot and load it into the oven. So for this penguin, we won't use the forks. We'll use gloves. We'll use Kevlar gloves to catch the penguin and put it in the oven. But if you're making like a bowl or a vase, this is a nice way because you can stick it in the oven without sticking your arms and face in. If you put the gloves on, you have to stick your arms and face into the oven. So the, the tongs are nice if you uh, are making a vessel to so stick it into the hot oven. Yeah. Oh, look, we have some little, got a little a little dog or a little wolf. Got a little bunny. See this little bunny, is so cute. A little kitty cat. So you can um, buy a little piece of Caffins as well. And these are 24. So you can adopt a little guy too. They're really cute.
But for a demonstration like this, we want to go all out and make a really large penguin. Yeah? yeah. So these are all molds. So the glass um, Catherine and Patrick and David are making today is freehand glass making, so it's off hand glass making. There's no molds. They're not using any sort of molds to blow the glass and create the shapes. But like the vase over there and some of the pieces where you see they have these like thicker lines, like the vase I picked up with the forks, it has those thicker lines. We'll use some of these optic molds to get that texture. Yep. But for this one, it's just off hand glass making, just no molds, just shaping the glass freehand. Yeah. So you can see we've already started to get the, the contour of the wings, maybe the shoulders. Or the bo oh, that's the bottom part of the wings. That's right. We're backwards in the oven. So now they're going to start to maybe pinch and pull out. Do you have a puntetto? Or is that? Yeah, so they might, they might even use this punty, that, this cold punty that Danes made to not transfer the iron, but to stick to the glass and pull out the wing. So they want just a little bit of glass on the end of the ice, on the end of the, uh, the rod that is sticky, but not hot. Is anyone from Montreal here today? Oh, we've got a couple. Nice, welcome. <laughs> and right back to the heat, so nothing gets too cold. So with this, this hand torch, this hot torch, they can heat certain areas and preheat those areas and then pull out the, the different areas. And then using those cork paddles as well to shape and contour the glass. That's why the, the cork is so nice because they can really carve into the glass without scratching it or marking it up too much. If you used metal, sometimes the metal will kind of leave a chill mark on the glass. Or if you use wood, it could leave um, burn marks in the glass. So the cork is really nice. And Catherine right now, she's heating up that, what we call the moil. It's the part, the glass that's on the pipe. And we don't want that to get too cold because if that gets too cold, it'll start to pop apart. And that's really the only thing holding this penguin on the blowpipe. And so we really want to make sure that that stays nice and hot. So when we're outside of the oven, spending a lot of time heating certain other areas, um, we keep a fluffy torch on that moil. And a lot of the things we do, we learn from experience. So there's you know many times where beginner glassmakers, they keep they do work like this and they don't heat that moil and the moil starts to pop and crack and then you lose the piece. And so sometimes those cracks can shoot all the way down the bubble. And so you learn from either watching someone or someone telling you, but sometimes you have to learn from making the uh, mistakes yourself. So Katie's also there, she can cap the pipe, which will keep the bubble um, intact and will collapse the bubble as they shape it. But it, she can also blow and inflate the bubble as they're working. Yep. 
How heavy is that? Yeah. So the pipe itself probably weighs about five pounds, and the glass maybe about uh, 10, 8 to 10 pounds. But like I said, if you pick up something heavy, like this mold, if I hold this mold right here, it doesn't, it's not too heavy. It's kind of manageable. But if I hold this mold way out here, then I'm, you know, I can feel it. I can feel how heavy it is. And so it's going to feel a lot heavier today out on the end of that pipe and having to cart it around and pick it up and move it and keep it turning. So it's going to feel a lot heavier right now than it will tomorrow where we can hold it in our hands. But it is, it is a good amount of glass, so it's pretty heavy. Yep. Right now, it looks like they're talking about how they're going to pull out the tips of the wings. They're speaking French, so I have no idea what they're saying. But I can see by the movements, they're pulling out the wings. I can tell, I can pick up on that. Glass making is very kind of, it's done pretty much the same all over the world. And so you could work with a glass artist that you didn't speak the same language. You could draw a picture or explain things in motions, you know, showing different tools. And so you can work with, um, but the fact that I saw Dane walk by with a cold punty and now Catherine's making this gesture kind of like pulling up and out the tip of the wing here kind of leads me to believe they're going to pull out the tip of this wing right here with that cold punty. So they're keeping the cold punty in the garage. So even though they're keeping it in the oven, it is cold. And they're heating up the area they want to pull out. You can see it's glowing hotter than the rest. That black color has lost a lot of its orange glow, except for the area where we're concentrating it. So they said they're going to pull out the tip of the wing, and they might need a little puff. It's always good to have someone there ready to blow and puff instead of having to yell at them and have them come over and quickly puff. So it's always nice to have someone sitting there ready just in case. They might not need it, but if they do, Katie is ready. Okay, here they come. Catherine brings over the cold punty. It's still hot, though, because if it, if it was really cold, like room temperature, it wouldn't stick. So it has to be a little bit hot. But it's not hot where it's moving or um, floppy. Watch this. This is pretty cool. They'll stick it on. They'll let it cool off a little bit, and then they'll slowly start to pull out the wing. Katie's going to blow a little bit. He's a little puff. So Katie's blowing. Now they're blowing. Now that's not a little puff anymore. It's a nice big blow. And they'll cut it free. And just like that, we've got the wing. What do you think? <laughs> we'll do that again. Okay, so there's the wing. The other way to do this is to add the wing on, and sometimes that can kind of look. Um, so, and like the, the smaller ones, they've added the wing on. See this one, they've got an added bit for the wing. So you can add on the wing, but in this case, they've decided to pull it right out of the bubble. So it gives you a, a different look. There is endless possibilities when it comes to glass. And we have a few exhibits currently that, that uh, display that. We have the 35 centuries of glass. So you can walk through that 35 centuries of glass gallery and see what they were doing 4,000 years ago. There's a, a, a blue fish in there that was made, I think, 4,000 years ago. And it's amazing that they could have made something like that with wood-fired ovens and glass. 
can go up in the contemporary art design wing and see the New Glass Now exhibit, which is a, uh, an exhibit of 100 pieces from glass that's, um, that artists have made now, like in our time, um, most recently. And so artists are using the glass in a lot of cool ways. And so you can go up to that exhibit and see some really neat things that people are doing with glass. Yeah, question? Yeah? <laughs> Is, we have a question from the crowd. Is anyone on the team craving rotisserie chicken? <laughs> now that you've said it, yeah. Now they want... <laughs> not fried chicken, rotisserie chicken. Because they turn the pipe so much? You mean rotisserie penguin? Oh. No, we're not cooking the penguin. We're adopting the penguin. We are not cooking the penguin. <laughs> we are not getting hungry. We want to take this penguin home uncooked. But we do have to kind of cook it to make it. So I see where, I see where, you're, where you're getting. Yep. <laughs> I bet the team, I bet the whole team, anybody on the team could make roast a really nice marshmallow. Perfectly, evenly toasted all the way around. Not in this oven. On a campfire, of course. <laughs> yeah, unless you want a burnt marshmallow. All right, so they're stretching and pulling the wing out to match the first one. And then they cut it free with those diamond shears. Yeah! Awesome. Now, it does cut the glass so it is sharp. So they use that little fi uh, uh, torch to fire polish the sharp cut edge. So they're gonna carve in the wings. We've got the feet in the in the garage. We've got the eyes. Maybe the beak will be fresh. I don't know if they already have. It looks like the beak might be fresh. And then the mohawk, the orange mohawk. Did everyone have a good time at the museum today? Awesome. We're happy to hear it. How's it going, Catherine? You happy with the shape? Awesome. He is very good. How long have you worked together? 15 years. Wow, yeah, you can tell. Everything happens so smooth, and it works really well. Awesome. So Catherine was just saying that Patrick helps her with all the big pieces. So like I was saying earlier, some people are not, um, maybe you, you don't work with big glass every day. If you work with big glass every day, hauling something like this around is pretty easy. But if you're used to making smaller work, so some of Catherine's pieces are like a little on the smaller side, they're not real heavy. Um, if you're not used to that, it's really difficult. So it's always nice to work with someone else who is um, more used to kind of pulling all that big glass around. So it's still Catherine's design, her ideas. She makes all the calls, but uh, Patrick is able to lift and manipulate the glass um, that's a little larger for her. So she said for about 15 years, they've been working together. Oh, nice. Oh, cool. So David's her full-time assistant, and he's been um, working with Catherine for about six years. So like we said, glass making is very much a team effort. And so 
Um, you usually have an assistant, if not more. And so currently, uh, David, is, uh, David is her full-time assistant. She probably has some. They probably have somebody that comes. Maybe. Do you have any? Do you have part-time assistants as well? They probably have some other. What's your average team size when you work? Three? The three of you. <laughs> nice. So the three of them. So some here, we got a couple extra people there. They're living large today. They got five assistants. All right, we're just curious. We I would like to know how many of you adopted a glass pet today? One, two. Did it have, awesome, very cool. How many of you are, cons oh, we've got more up here, nice. One up here, yeah. Did you all get a, a nice little cute glass pet? They're so nice because you don't have to take, take them out in the middle of the night and you don't have to scoop the, the poop and all that. They just sit there and they're so nice and they, they don't bark back, they don't tug on the leash. Glass pets, I highly re recommend adopting a glass pet. Are they on the website? They are on the website for sale. So if you know someone at home that wants a pet without all the, uh, the responsibility of a live pet, they don't have the time, they travel a lot maybe, maybe a glass pet would be a good recommendation or gift for that person. You could go to our website, which is cmog.org. Check out the shops. Shops.cmog.org. You can buy your friend that glass pet, adopt a glass pet for your friend that they've always wanted. So Christmas is coming up, maybe a birthday, Maybe just a, I know you've always wanted a glass pet gift. You like the color purple, you like rabbits, dogs, cats, elephants, mice. Yeah, so mice are really cute, but do we want mice? No, but do we like glass mice? Yes, works out. What's nice if you get one today, is Catherine's here. You've seen their work. You can talk to the artist. You can get your picture taken with her. That's the best part about adopting a glass pet today. Catherine's been here many times and she's done many um, demos here at the museum. Um, throughout the years. So it's always fun to, to have the team come back. All right, they need some paddles, some wooden paddles. They've got wooden paddles and graphite paddles. So the, the paddle that Catherine is holding is made out of graphite. Graphite's nice because it doesn't catch on fire. It doesn't stick to the glass. The wood, it would catch right on fire and it would also stick to the glass. All right, so now it's time to pull out the tail in kind of the same way that they pulled out the arm. So Patrick's going to heat this up. Catherine's going to get that cold punty or that puntetto and pull. So when you're sculpting a glass bubble, it's a lot different than making sort of a, um, a vessel. You know, there's not a lot of sculpting with that. And so when you're sculpting glass, there's all these little tricks and every um, glass sculptor works a little differently. Some glass sculptors, like Martin Yanetsky, they sculpt from the inside. So he has these inside sculpting tools that he uses. So he creates a bubble and kind of pushes the glass out from the inside. Like this, you can s stick that pantetto on there and pull it out. Um, lots of different ways to, 
to sculpt this material. And so everybody's got different ways to do it. So it's always fun to watch new artists uh, make all the different things that they make. Because this is what they do every day, and so they're very good at it. And so watching someone who's very good at what they do is um, really fun to watch. All right, so they stick that right on there. See how soft that bubble is? Katie's blowing, so you can see that the black part, that's where the bubble is. It starts to inflate, it doesn't collapse. And they're gonna pull and stretch this right out. That's the tail. Cute. Right. All right, so now they're going to transfer the glass off of the blowpipe and flip it around and work on the top, so the head. So they're heating up the top. That's where they're gonna create a little thermal shock or stress. So they're gonna break it right up there at the top. So it's always nice to put a little torch on that to break that free. Um, Patrick is talking with Dane about the size and shape of the punty. So this is going to be a transfer iron that um, they will flip the whole thing around with. And so they have, it has to be a certain size, a certain shape. There's sculpture punties, there's dome punties. So it all depends on what you're making, whether, what kind of punty you want. Or maybe they're going to add the feet. I'm not sure what they're, okay. they're up to. Maybe they, they probably add the feet before they punt it. Yeah. So Catherine's gonna start to heat up the feet, pulling them out of the garage where they've been parked to keep warm. So she'll take them from the hot, the cold side of the garage to the hot side of the garage and then into the oven to start to get them nice and hot, nice and soft. The whole while they're just keeping the body of the penguin nice and hot. I like this little dog, he's so cute. Kind of looking right up at you. Got a bunny, a little tail, a kitty cat. So got all sorts of little animals. Ready to be adopted into the family. Still doing all right on questions? So did you go to yeah. Class? Yeah, the crucible of molten glass. Do we turn that off at night? We do not. We would turn that off if we were going to shut down for a long period of time, like a month or so. So let's say, you know, 
we close a couple of days out of the year. So we, we close, you know, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So it's two days, you'd think. Why don't we just shut the furnace off? But it takes the furnace, that furnace that holds about 1,000 pounds of glass, it takes about three days to come down to room temperature and about three days to come back up. We want to turn it up nice and slow. And in the meantime, we have to empty out all the glass. And so we never shut this furnace off. We opened this hot shop back in 2015, and that furnace has been on the whole time. Yeah, so glass making is very much an expensive um, process. <laughs> we get a nice fruit basket from Corning Natural Gas every year. I haven't seen the bill, but I know that they're probably pretty happy that we're here. All right, so there's one foot. See how they got nice and hot, nice and gooey? They stick it right on there, and with a light tap, it pops right off. Yeah. One foot. One beautiful penguin foot, pre-made. You can imagine, we'd have to wait for them to make the foot, but since they're pre-made, all we have to do is stick it right on there. All right, so they've got one foot. She's going to just kind of make sure that that punty, they had, a, they had the foot on a punty, and they broke it free, so it is a little sharp and jagged, so now she's going to fire polish where that punty scar was. Because who's ever broken glass before? Yep, you know it breaks in a sharp edge, right? But here it's nice because it's still hot, so all we have to do is fire polish the sharp edge. And it's softened and rounded out, so it's nice here in the hot shop. If we break glass, we can sometimes we can fix it easily. Other times, it's not so easy. All right, so David's got the other foot. They're using that small hand torch to soften just the edge that they want to attach because the hotter the glass is, the more permanent of an attachment it'll be. So like the punty attachments, they're not as hot, so they break off really easily. Whereas these attachments, we want these feet to stay on there forever. And so they'll heat that up quite a bit. Timing, temperature, and teamwork are all really important. So this has to be done at the right time. So you can see um, Catherine's kind of going back and forth from the benches, telling them to flash and seeing when this is ready. Temperature, it has to be done at the right temperature, not only time, but temperature. And of course, teamwork is really, really important. Right, two feet are on there. Again, she's gonna soften the punty mark from where that broke free. And then we're going to punty the penguin, removing it from the blowpipe. All right, so they're going to paddle this to make sure that it will stand up nice and straight, making sure the feet aren't going to make it so that it doesn't stand up straight. And we they use uh, 
the wood and different things to flatten the bottom. Quick flash. All right, now Dane's going to start the punty. So he picks a nice big pipe to hold the weight. And they're going to drill a tiny little hole in the bottom of the penguin. So with a tungsten rod, and a cordless drill, they will drill a tiny hole in the glass. See how it went all the way through? They'll open it up. So this is just going to allow air to escape because they're gonna close off the top of the head. And so um, if they weren't to drill this hole and they keep the bubble on the punty and close off the top, every time they go in for a reheat, the air inside will expand and distort the bubble. And so this little hole in the bottom will allow them to close off the top and allow the air to escape freely. Now saying that Dane can't make the punty on a solid rod, he has to make it on a blowpipe so that when they put the punty on there, the air can escape through the punty as well. All tricks that glass sculptors know and use. So they're going to start to heat up that area that they will break the glass free on. Make sure that this line is nice and tight. All the way into the oven. There you can see the little hole from the camera. So now they're just waiting. Dane's making the uh, punty, sculpture punty. They'll kind of pinch it out so it's like a crown. And they don't want it to cover the hole, so he's made it sort of like a ring punty. So it'll fit on the bottom in a ring over the hole allowing the air to escape freely. That was a good shot. The whole team <laughs> up on the big screen. The hardest part, besides waiting for this glass penguin to make it out of the annealer over the course of a couple of days, is naming it. We still have to name it, remember? We've got all those names on the board. All right, so Dane sticks that on there. And I don't know if that will happen tonight or it might happen in a couple of days, I'm not sure. So they'll cut in this little line They check to make sure that the hole was open, which it is. You saw Dane blow through the end of the pipe and they all went, yep, yep, yep. So it is an open hole. They'll, right now they're all jammed up, they're stuck together. So it's gotta break off at some point. And the, we want it to break off at the neckline right there. So he, Patrick is checking with Dane to see if he's ready. They'll cool off the neckline. 
with a few drops of cold water. A few drops, here we go. And with a very light tap, it pops right off. Was anyone holding their breath? Yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah, Dane, Dane was a little surprised. He wasn't expecting the tink so soon. But he's ready. Dane, is a, Dane also has uh, about 17 years of experience, so he knows to be ready whenever. And he's caught many things on a putty. Yeah, so it's, Dane said it's better. It's too hot than too cold, right? Because if it's too cold and you tap the pipe, the punty pops off, it pumps off, pops off the pipe, and the piece hits the floor. And nobody wants a floor model, right? Nobody wants broken shards of penguin all over the floor. We don't want to scramble to pick it up off the floor. It does happen. It's not going to happen probably tonight, because the team, this is something they've made before. Um, everything's going to go really smooth. When things start to go wrong is when you're given a time limit and you're told you have a challenge to make and you've never worked with your assistant, like on this show, Blown Away, right, Patrick? Was that stressful or what? Just enough. Just, a, just the right amount of pressure. Yep. So if you haven't seen the show, it's a fun show to watch. So glass blowing is a really nice process to, to use for a, a sort of a reality show or a competition, I should say a competition show because everything has to be just right. And if you're off, you'll notice there's a lot of times, um, like the team from Corning, we even went up for the last episode and some of the pieces we made did not survive and they broke and they cracked and um, we had to start over. And so it does happen, especially if you're making something new or pushing the limits. Yeah, they closed off the top. There we go. So here tonight, we don't have a time limit. The team has been working, the three of them, yay! <laughs> the team, the three of them have been working together for years. They're very familiar with each other. Our team has years of experience. So Dane and Katie, they have lots of experience. Um, so everything should go really smooth today. And, um, the pressure is not there. This is not a competition. This is a fun glass blowing demonstration. So there's no, none of that pressure. No one's going home tonight. No one's getting kicked off the show tonight. So that's always a nice thing. The only thing we hope that happens tonight is everyone goes home with a glass pet. That's what we're hoping for. We hope that all the little cats and dogs and rabbits get adopted tonight to their forever homes. You got a glass pet? Which glass pet do you have? Oh, a purple cat for her fiance. How nice. Does he love cats? He loves cats and Purple cats are the best, right? Can't get a purple cat in real life unless you dye it, and that's just inhumane. Not a good idea. I don't recommend dyeing the cat's fur, yeah. But if you have a glass cat, they come in all different colors. Do we have a black cat? We're out of black. Oh, no. Oh, no. Well, we'll have to ask Catherine that when she has some free time, if she could make some more black cats. I bet those sell out pretty quick because everybody loves black cats. I think, right? Yeah, it's Halloween coming up. Everyone wants a black cat for Halloween. All right, so they're keeping those feet warm. You notice Katie's opening up the doors on the oven. We want to make sure that this fits in and out of the oven. And 
so she'll open up those doors so they can get in and out. Not only do we not want to hit the glass with the doors because it'll fall off the punty, but also it will stick to the doors. So glass is very sticky. It will stick to anything else that is hot, including those hot ceramic doors. So all that's left is the eyes, those big bubble eyes. I still like the name Bopper, because those eyes are bopping right out of his head. Oh yeah, and then the, the little crest or the mohawk, because we're getting out, oh, we've got the corn yellow back out for the beak, and the beak first, and then the mohawk. Is it a mohawk or a crest? Or neither, maybe it's just some hair, just some fluff at the top. I like to think of it as a mohawk. I think it's kind of cool. It looks kind of, yeah. It's whatever you want it to be, right? Yep. Question? What kind of penguin is it? It's a soda lime penguin. Soda lime, it's made of soda lime glass. What's the main ingredient of our glass? Does anybody know? Plastic? No! No! This isn't the Corning Museum of Plastic. Yeah. Silica sand. Yeah, silica sand is the main ingredient. And the next ingredient is soda ash. So soda ash reduces the silica's melting temperature. And limestone is the stabilizer. So silica Soda ash and limestone. It's the most common glass in the world. So this penguin is a soda lime glass penguin. Very rare. Very rare. All right, so David's applying that corn yellow for the beak. A few good coats, we don't want it to be too thin. We want a couple good, nice coats of that nice corn yellow. Looks orange now while it's hot, but it will be a nice um, orange color. All right, so they use the torch to keep the punty warm. Catherine's got a set of large shears in her hand. So the bigger the cut, the bigger the shear. And so we've got little tiny shears for making goblets. We've got shears called, so the shears she has in her hand now, we call those like a large shear or a casting shear, nice and large. We've got these little trim shears for cutting little tiny things. These are nice. These are duck bill shears. They look like a duck's bill. So all sorts of shears for using different things. So she's got the large shears, so watch this. They stick it on. Ooh, that's a nice shot. They stretch it up, and watch this. She'll cut it free. Look at that. What do you think? Our penguin now has a beak. He can breathe, he can eat, he can talk. He can walk and talk, but he can't see yet because he doesn't have his big bubble eyes. <laughs> Bopper, they're gonna bop right out of his head. So when, you, when they cut it, it did leave a, a sharp edge. So they're going to fire polish that sharp edge here with that small hand torch. The other torch just <laughs> keeps everything nice and hot. A graphite paddle will make sure that this is the perfect cone shape. So probably the most... Um, the areas that are most important to keep warm are those, the little thin areas that the, t the wings and the tail are pulled out. They're much smaller, they, they cool down much quicker than the rest of the piece. 
And so when the piece is out of the oven, they'll keep those nice and warm by using that fluffy torch. All right, so now they're gonna he start heating up the eye socket area. And then David's going to start to pull the eyes out of the oven, or out of the garage here. So they're pre-made, so all they have to do is bop them right on there. There we are. Catherine pushes in the eye socket. It's always nice that this has a, a place to go, a nice little socket for this eyeball to fit really nicely into. She'll heat up the other side, and she'll use that tool called a taglio, which has a rounded edge, to press in the eye socket. And then the other eye will just pop right in there. See it glowing? It's glowing nice and bright, and now it's nice and soft, and she can just push that tool, there we go, right into the glass. Hmm. This penguin is coming to life right before our eyes. I think it's gonna look, it'll really come to life once we get the eyes on there. And then the final touch will be that little mohawk or crest. And then just like every piece of glass that was ever made this way, the glass has to slowly cool or over a period of time. And so for this piece, maybe about 24 hours is good. The slow cooling process because it is larger, it's got a lot of um, connections and different the eyes and the feet. They're all a little different. So we'll put this on a longer cycle so it will, everything will cool nice and even. All right, David's heating up the, the back of the eye. This time, Catherine's got a set of diamond shears. They cut in a diamond-shaped aperture, but they're also good for holding on to pipes with. So she grabs a hold of it, and they stick it right in the eye socket. And what makes these, oh, and then there's another set of shears to cool it, and a light tap, it pops right off. The crowd goes wild. So they're gonna torch it, remove the sharp edge from where that punty came off, and do that second eye. So they use that torch to now they're going to use the tweezers. Sometimes the cut mark will leave sort of a, a weird look to the glass. And so instead of cutting it this time, they pulled it thin, and now they're tapping it off. And so that won't leave a sheer mark. All right, time for the next eye. I like how the eyes aren't looking straight on. They're kind of looking off to the side, which makes it really cartoony, really silly looking. If they were looking straight, if the artist chooses to put this eye straight on, that looks very serious and very focused. But by giving them the eyes that kind of look off 
two different directions. It gives it that kind of goofy character. And a lot of her pieces have that sort of really fun, whimsical kind of personality. These are pieces you look at them and you just smile. They make you feel good, they make you feel happy. Okay, we're getting pretty close. A few more heats, a little torch on the connection point. You know, you, he, they ask, are you good to go? We got a yes and a way. We're ready to go. And in with the other eye, and <laughs> look at this penguin. How cute is that? Do you love it? Yeah. I love it. All right, so now the crest. They'll, they'll torch the eye, make sure that the punty mark is nice and clean. And then they'll add the crest at the top. Any questions while we're finishing up? Yep. Um, how, how do they know how deep the eye socket has to be? Well, so there's a sketch up there on the board, and in the sketch it shows the eyes kind of popping out of the head. So if they wanted the eyes to be really kind of sunk back into the head, they'd make the eye sockets much bigger. That way the eye would go all the way in. But because they want those eyes popping right out of the head, they only made the eye socket very shallow. They also made the eyes earlier, so they kind of have a rough estimate of how big the eye is as well. Yep. So a lot of planning goes into making glass like this. It's not something that they just kind of wing. Uh, there's been a lot of talk, a lot of planning. All right, a couple coats of that corn yellow for the crest or the mohawk. Be the final touch, and then this glass penguin will go away to cool very slowly over a period of time. The largest piece of glass in the museum's collection, which is the 200 inch mirror lens, which is in the Innovations Gallery. And it's the big 200 inch disc that weighs about 20 tons. It was cast here in Corning for the telescope at um, Mount Palomar, the HAL telescope. And that piece of glass weighs 20 tons. Like I said, it's 200 inches. And it had to slowly cool or anneal for 11 months. So a very long time. So the bigger the glass, the thicker the glass, the longer that annealing cycle is. But for this piece, maybe about 24 hours, maybe more or less. Um, Um, we'll ask Dane here in just a minute how much he thinks it weighs. Every time they add more glass, it does get a little heavier. So there's the mohawk. Now they're going to cut the little bits into it. And just like that, Catherine puts the final touches on this beautiful penguin. Cool. 
Dane, if you had to guess how much that weighed, what would you say? 12 to 15 pounds. Yeah, pretty heavy. Would you agree, David? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's not a light piece of glass. This is a big piece of glass, so it is pretty heavy. Right, a couple more. A couple more flashes, and then somebody's going to suit up. Oh, Dane's already suited up in his silver suit with his Kevlar gloves and his face shield. This will be the last look at this beautiful penguin before it slowly cools. Before we break this off, what, uh, the museum is now closed. So as you exit, we're going to ask you not to exit through the galleries, but to come down if you're able and make your way out to this side and through the, the front entrance because the museum is now closed. And so we won't be going back into the galleries at this point. Your tickets are good for tomorrow if you want to come back, however. If you are interested in purchasing a pet, I believe the shops are now closed. So you can do that online or come back tomorrow or any time throughout the year. All right, we'll add a few drops of cold water to that punty connection, and with a very light tap, this should pop right off. So Katie's gonna grab the doors, Dane's going to carry it into the oven. A few drops of cold water, a very light tap. Pops right off. That small hand torch will remove the sharp edge from where that broke free and into our, co our slow cooling oven where we can get a closer look at this beautiful glass penguin in the morning. Dane's gonna see if it stands up. If it doesn't, he'll lay it down. And there we are. <laughs> Catherine Labonte, everyone. <laughs> Patrick Primo, David, the team here at Corning. All right, so Amanda's going to show Catherine the list of names. And this is going to be pressure, but I don't know if she's going to try. Maybe she will pick one tonight. Maybe it's just too much pressure. We'll have to wait and see. And like I said, the museum is closed. So if you are going to exit, you're going to make your way down the stairs if you can. And you're going to exit to this side of the amphitheater. It's a really hard decision. If you have any questions, Feel free to come down and ask. Dilly dilly. Dilly dilly, chili dilly. Chili dilly is the penguin. Have a wonderful evening. Thanks for coming and enjoy the rest of your night.